Hamza. What do you have to say to the people that are watching from home? I pray to win. He plays to win. Meet Amsa. He plays to win. Unfortunately for Amsa, the character he plays is really terrible. Well, before he made the character good. Next time, my turn. As with many Japanese games, our story begins in Japan. In 1991, a little dude named Masaya Chikamoto was born, and instantly, he had a purpose. Play Yoshi in every single game that allowed him to. It was no different when in 2001, HAL Laboratory released the sequel to Super Smash Bros. titled Super Smash Bros. Melee, which featured a returning character young Masaya was ecstatic to see. Hours and hours of fun spent with his siblings, 90% of the time spent as Yoshi. Seeing videos of techniques players would use for minigames like Break the Target's Home Run Contest and Race to the Finish, Messiah and his siblings were introduced to the game's fledgling competitive scene, and with that, sought to emulate these cool tricks they'd see used in these videos. With all this time put into the game, Messiah would quickly become the best in his neighborhood, destroying his friends and classmates. Though, as with most people, naturally as time went on, his interest in the game waned. After all, there were new Yoshis to enjoy seemingly every day. Years down the line, the Yoshi enthusiast would enter college to study physics. One evening, a friend of his who knew of his early dominance in Melee would introduce him to someone named Sane, and recommended they play a bit of Melee together. Amsa happily obliged, and not long after, the two were sat in front of a heavy, old box TV, ready to game. Messiah, of course, selected Yoshi. Sane's cursor, however, would hover over a different character. The result was... You know, there are plenty of players all over the world even better than me, Sane said. Oh. Messiah would go home and look into these better players, and allured by their speed and blazing, hectic movement, was immediately enthralled. Even having watched those old high score videos of the best players, this was not the melee he played with his siblings as a child. The game had evolved. Foxes moving at incredible speeds, putting on a light show. I broke the controller, dog. Boy, fit, my nigga. Peaches comboing in ways he'd never imagined. <laughs> Captain Falcons igniting the crowd, hitting knee after knee after knee. Falco locking down his opponents with laser, converting into full stocks taken in a flash. Marth punishing his opponent's misspacing, landing grabs with brutal but beautiful accuracy. And Jigglypuff doing her thing. Oh man, that's, that's it. Uh. In other videos, he saw huge crowds, hundreds of people gathered in one place, cheering at Nintendo mascots beat each other up. It was awesome. There was just one problem though. Where were all the Yoshis? In 2013, the year Messiah would begin entering tournaments, Yoshi was not well regarded. In fact, Yoshi was considered comfortably shit near the bottom of the tier list, the sixth worst character in the entire game. Unlike the good and decent characters, he had trouble comboing and killing, he was wide and easy to hit, and he was also just weird. In many, many ways, other characters just weren't. He couldn't jump out of a shield, putting him at a severe defensive disadvantage. His double jump started by making him dip down. His up special, which is typically a move used to get back on stage, instead makes him throw an egg. And he made all these noises. As such, no one really cared to use Yoshi at all. No one was pushing the character, let alone playing him, and by that token, playing against him. Yoshi's were... extinct. Undeterred and eager to compete, 
Messiah would don the mantle of competitive melee's Yoshi himself. Bottom tier or not, he would compete with Yoshi. Red Yoshi. Because Red is cool. And despite all of Yoshi's perceived shortcomings, he would play to win. First though, Messiah needed a tag he would go by when entering tournaments. Initially, he settled on a shortening of his name, Masa. Though, upon learning this tag was commonly used by Japanese fighting game players, he swapped the A and the M to form the tag that would become legendary, Amsa. Taking notes from his Yoshi forefathers like Vector Man and Leffen's Yoshi, practice began. After getting the basics of melee down, one of the first Yoshi-specific pieces of tech he would learn to implement was parrying. In melee, to add weight to attacks, the developers added freeze frames when players would get hit and hit something, both of these extending the player's shields. However, due to Yoshi's uniquely programmed egg shield, Yoshi receives no freeze frames when an opponent hits him during his shield startup animation, where Yoshi is invincible. And if the Yoshi player precisely times it so an opponent hits him during the startup, Yoshi can act way before his opponent can, leaving some otherwise safe attacks wide open for a punish. Time too early, however, where the attack hits Yoshi's shield, and your chance to parry is lost. Time too late, and you just get hit. In Amsa's early days, this punish would typically be a single neutral air. Let's just say a modest reward for this 2 frame, or 0.03 second, technique. Using just the game's basics, combo practice, and the ability to parry somewhat consistently, things started out pretty solidly on Amsa's competitive journey. At his very first tournament in January of 2013, he finished 5th out of 15, and at his 2nd, 4th out of 16. And just a few months after that, at the first tournament in the Battle Gateway series, he would finish 2nd out of 24 players. Now, for having only played for half a year in a game that at that point had been out for over a decade, 2nd out of 24 players is pretty damn good, especially when some of his opponents had been playing for years. However, this was 2nd out of 24 in Japan, which was considered a much weaker melee scene skill-wise than both North America and Europe. Fuck it. Let's go to EVO. Based in Las Vegas, Nevada, EVO is pretty much THE fighting game tournament. And coincidentally, 2013, the year AMSA began competing, would feature Melee for the first time in six years. And with the hype surrounding it, EVO 2013 would quickly rack up what was then the most entrance of any Melee tournament ever. By far. And it would have all of the best North American and European players present. Realizing this might be a once-in-a-lifetime chance, AMSA, accompanied by fellow Japanese players Konatori and Sheik, would travel across the Pacific to introduce himself to the world, and show players what he could do. Beforehand, though, AMSA had added a few things to his arsenal. On top of further refinement of his parrying, AMSA would begin implementing double jump cancelling, a technique only possible for a few characters, one of them being Yoshi. For these characters, when you use an aerial attack soon after your double jump, their upward momentum from double jumping is halted. This might seem like somewhat of a bad thing since you lose your potential height. However, this allows these characters to return to the ground way more quickly than if they had just jumped normally. Which means chaining multiple aerials or aerials into other moves is extremely quick, allowing for sick, fast combos that otherwise might not even be possible. On top of this, Amsa would also make better use of his double jump armor, a mechanic exclusive to Yoshi that lets him tank through attacks for 69 frames after double jumping, or until he acts out of his double jump. Though moves that have enough knockback, either naturally or because Yoshi's percent is high enough, will break the armor. At EVO, Amsa would decimate his first round of pools before reaching Mewtwo King, then ranked number 3 in the world. Mewtwo King was considered one of the five gods of Melee, a group of extremely talented players who were the favorites to win any tournament they entered, and who almost never lost to anyone except each other. To even put a dent in Mewtwo King would be an incredible feat, let alone with a low tier. In this best of three set where the first player to reach two wins takes the match, 
things started out as everyone expected. A solid multi-stock win from Mewtwo King. And the game 2 started off similarly, with Mewtwo King eventually going up 4 stocks to 2. But not long after, this guy's playing Yoshi. Come on. Omsa would step it up. Hitting insane combos with his newly implemented techniques, Amso would take a game off of one of the gods. However, Mewtwo King at this point had been playing for many years, and was no stranger to tied sets. In the final game, Mewtwo King would slow things down considerably, and despite some cool stuff from Amsa, would again convincingly two-stock him, sending Amsa into the loser's bracket. Here, Amsa would make quick work of Mr. F, before losing 0-2 to a Falco player named Deshizwiz, ending his EVO run. And in first place, the new Smash Melee World Champion, it's Mega! Ken, this is who has your throne. <laughs> As Melee had its new EVO champion crowned in Mango, the most dominant of the five gods, with a ridiculous seven consecutive set run through loser's bracket, Amso would end his first international tournament solidly in his own right, with a respectable 25th place, outplacing many legends of the game. Playing to win as he was though, 25th, frankly, wasn't even close. In an AMA thread after EVO 2013's conclusion, Mango was asked if he thought low tiers could be viably used in competitive play. Mango was unconvinced. In spite of this, with just his Japanese results in EVO, Amsa, in his first year of competition, would be ranked 77th in the entire world, and would be the only Yoshi on the entire list. In January of the next year, Amsa would enter his second international tournament, Apex 2014, where he would sweep his round one pools, getting a win on legendary Ice Climber's main shootout in the process. Oh, oh that was smash! Yes! Amsa takes it! Concluding in this picture of his now iconic pop-off. He'd then go on to beat Silent Wolf, a Fox main ranked 16th in the world. It's a wrap! He's all done! Yo, is this kid the real deal? 25th at Evo! Then fly Amanita, in Ice Climber's main ranked 21st. Amsa's run continued until he faced another of the five gods, Dr. PP, who defeated the Red Yoshi at 2-0, and immediately afterward, he would lose again to Kobold, ending Amsa's run at 9th place. Just shy of the prestigious top 8, consisting of the last four players in the winner's bracket and the last four players in the loser's bracket, who fight to win the entire tournament on Championship Sunday. And if Amsa wanted to win, the Red Dinosaur first needed to get there. Not long after this though, Amsa would enter MLG Anaheim 2014, where he would have what is possibly the most heartbreaking performance of his entire career. It was here that Amsa would first face off against two of his biggest future rivals, Hungrybox, another of the five gods, and EVO 2013 winner Mango. His set with Hungrybox was a brutal 0-3. Zero. And while he did manage to take a game from Mango, his other sets weren't too much better, and a few of them would see Amsa go up 2-0 in the best of five set, but be reverse swept to lose. Amsa ended his pool winning one set out of seven. This poor performance resulted in Amsa being placed in loser's bracket of the next day's championship bracket, where he would face Falcon player S2J in round one. And after going up 2-0, he would once again be beaten three games in a row to lose the set, placing dead last. It was with these heartbreaking losses that spectators began to notice something strange about Amsa. Other than, you know, Amsa was always, always smiling. In a game where handshakes from the best of the best would often look like this, and this, and this, and players would be visibly upset and combative, Amsa stuck out as someone that could not only be reverse swept several times in one weekend with grace, but keep a smile on his face the entire time. Despite his play-to-win mentality, 
Omso was just happy to be playing the game. And to many, his enjoyment of the game was infectious. <laughs> Look at Omso doing a little dance. Gonna dance. He's doing a little really. dance. That's about smiling. He's just, just getting off. Still though, for Omsa, there was much serious grinding to be done to make up for this performance. What's up with it? It's the Scar at Kings of Cali 4 at Dave & Buster's in uh, Westchester? I don't know. We're near LA. After another disappointing result at CEO 2014, Omsa would enter Kings of Cali 4, a tournament featuring three of the five gods in Mango, Armada, and Mewtwo King. Here, it seemed Omsa would regain his footing a bit. And that's the set. It goes to Omsa 3 0. Oh, he's done. Under the stage. 3 0 by Omsa. Good stuff. But not long into his impressive winner's bracket run, a run that at this point Omsa really needed, Omsa would again face Mewtwo King. This is one of the best players to ever play the game, Mewtwo King, versus a new Japanese rising star, Amsa, who's playing an obscure character. Can you even see, man, I love Amsa, but can you see him taking a match? Eh. <laughs> one of the Mewtwo King's just Mewtwo King, man. Yeah. Like, what do oh, you do is this guy? Yeah. Like, like I said, I'm not trying to hate, but I can't see Amsa taking a It's going to be very, very difficult. This is a Mewtwo King. But Amsa made it to Winner's Corner, so, you know, it's, it's awesome. You know, I've been hoping that he used the right. Oh, that's nice. a kill. That's strong. That's stronger than you think. Ooh, he what went for the upward angle for. Oh, that might be a kill. Oh, okay. Just barely missing. That, that might be it. Oh my God. Up is up. Two stocks. Awesome. One. Let's go. The crowd comes alive. Dude, camp it. This is what it feels this. like. That egg is so. Keep throwing him. Uh oh, that's what Mitsuki wanted. That's what Mitsuki wanted. Oh. oh. But, he, but he didn't go anywhere. Clap, clap, so the clap. first the first hit doesn't do any knockback, right? But the second one does hella. And so the second one got him out of his double jump. Whoa. Whoa! Wow. Okay. That move, that move, dude. Mark oh, there it is! Whoa! He found it! And then four is up. Oh! What the oh. hell? No way! No! It no is, way! Amsa coming off of like some rough losses at MLG. He also uh, did make it out of pools at CEO. He's got a lot to prove right here. Right, He's right. doing a lot of work against one of the best players in the game. He owes that. Oh, oh. the fairy! This guy is insane. These eggs don't make sense. That's it. Oh my God! Gibber, please show the whole crowd. Everyone is watching this in this whole venue. Scar. Amsa up two games to one. I did not see this happening First, at Mewtwo all. King. Mewtwo King it feels like it's breaking, it's crashing his operating system. Oh, oh, oh my god! Qui-Gon Jin, Qui Jin, dude. Oh! Okay, here we go. The egg. egg! Oh, oh no! Oh, egg. No way, dude. Egg down smash! No way! Wait. What is happening what right now? Wait. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! He's dead. That's a stock! Mewtwo King on his last stock! He doesn't. Are we gonna witness Amsa taking a set off of one of the gods? Of one of the gods of the game. Don't get too impatient, Amsa. Jabs. The egg. Oh, that's it. That's oh. it. Oh. Amsa takes it. He does a Shoryuken wow. in celebration. Mewtwo wow. objectively unplugging his controller. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. Everybody giving Amsa a big round of applause. Closing out the biggest win of his career, Amsa would face Mango for the second time. This set though, Mango seemed more confident in the matchup, quickly 3-0-ing Amsa. After falling to the loser's bracket, Amsa's run would end at fifth place after losing to Lucky. And despite these two back-to-back -back losses to be eliminated, with a win on one of the world's best players, Amsa had received all the motivation he needed to continue pursuing competitive melee. The victory was stellar, and playing as Yoshi, it was almost unbelievable. Though, while it was true he had beaten one of the best players ever, to win the tournaments Mewtwo King was capable of winning, Amsa had to be able to beat not only Mewtwo King, but everyone else Mewtwo King was able to beat, which he was still far from being able to do. Amsa needed more to close the gap. More practice, more tech skill, more experience. So, with renewed confidence, the journey continued.
Apex 2015 saw the beginning of an unprecedented rise in popularity for Melee. It was here that the game first saw a tournament reach over 1,000 entrants. And it was here that Amsa would have his best performance yet. Amsa had now graduated, and mere months before Apex 2015, had become employed as a systems engineer. A schedule that previously allowed him to rather easily juggle school and melee practice, analysis, traveling, and competing, had been replaced with days that typically looked like this. At 6.30, Amsa would wake up and shower. At 7, Amsa would leave for work, and on his commute, study recordings of his melee matches. After his hour-long commute, he would arrive at work at 8.30 to prepare for the day and eat breakfast. 9.30 saw Amsa actually start work, and after working for 10 to 11 hours, he'd leave work, commute an hour back home to eat dinner, then, near midnight, practice the game. Amsa would fall asleep a few hours later, typically getting around 5 to 6 hours of sleep, before repeating the cycle. This meant the vast majority of Amsa's melee playtime was reserved for weekends, where he would sometimes practice for as long as 12 hours straight. A stark contrast to most top melee players whose jobs were to play melee. With this new lifestyle he had to adjust to, it was a miracle his Apex run was as incredible as it was. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh Amsa, that was a, that's such it. a big moment. But Leffen gets the up smash. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, no. S match suicides. And Amsa makes it into the top eight. So this will be his highest placing in any national. You know, I think a lot of people were questioning, you know, is he the real deal? After trudging his way through loser's bracket, Amsa would meet Mango once again, where they would fight for fifth place. Mango, who had months earlier won EVO 2014, was firmly the best player in the world at the time. And being in top eight at the largest tournament of all time, Amsa would be sure to put on a show. By the end of 2015, Amza had single-handedly risen Yoshi up from 21st on the tier list to 12th. Yoshi now sat as not one of the worst characters in the game, but in the upper half of the cast. Amza also ranked as 24th best player in the world, and once again was the only Yoshi among all of the top 100 players. After this, Amza's international presence declined considerably. Due to his new responsibilities as a full-time engineer, he simply did not have the time to attend as much as he once did. While his results in Japan were solid, with him even picking up a few first-place finishes in these smaller events, what little things he did attend from 2016 onward saw a somewhat disappointing plateau of results, typically in the 12th to 9th range, where the Yoshi would again and again place within this new, unfortunate standard never quite able to replicate his incredible Apex 2015 performance. Welcome to Smash Summit 66666. Yo, we are here. We're about to start some singles. We're about to get into the real shit now, guys. No more smiles. Things changed in a big way in 2018, starting at Smash Summit 6, an invitational featuring 16 of the absolute best players. In pools, Amsa would face off against Hungrybox, who in 2018 was an absolute beast ranked number one in the world with ease. At this point, Hungrybox had a 4-0 record on Amsa, and none of their sets were close. For Hungrybox, in arguably his most dominant year of competition, to lose to Amsa would be crazier than Amsa's Mewtwo King victory four years prior. Completely ridiculous. And yet... Oh, 
After this historic victory, Amsa's trajectory only seemed to move upward as he reached 5th place a number of times, racking up several top 10 wins along the way. With these results, it was hard to argue when, for the first time in the year-end rankings, Amsa was placed within the top 10 players in the entire world. Amsa, the only Japanese player on the list who traveled at a minimum of 12 hours to compete in North America, then back home another 12 hours, playing a mid-tier was beginning to make people believe that Yoshi could be a viable tournament threat. That Yoshi, a low-tier turned mid-tier by one man with a full-time job, could take a tournament over the best players in the world. People were beginning to believe that maybe, maybe, AMSA really could do it. AMSA stocks were at an all-time high at Genesis 6, where after beating top talents such as Spark, Sfat, and Ginger, AMSA had made it into top 8 through winner's bracket. After a dominant showing from Plup in winner semis, AMSA would fall to loser's bracket to meet Mango for the fifth time in his career. Mango, who had lost early in the tournament to Magi, was on a classic Mango run through losers, and looked unstoppable tearing through seven straight top players in a row. Amsa, though, instilled with newfound confidence in the skill to take out even a player as dominant as Hungrybox, was a new man. And not only did he beat Mango for the first time, he whooped his ass. Part-time magician, specialty at making stocks disappear on command. Oh my, yo, he's beat the pranks off of me. He's doing a lot more full hops with the parry. Doing it for Japan, Tokyo, China. He's like, hey, you ever felt the back of a steel toe? <laughs> oh, now's your chance. <laughs> oh, dang, man, that, turtle, that tail oh! hurts. Oh my god, dunk dip. Can Mango do this? He can, but it's, it's gonna be hard, man. It's gonna be, it's, it's gonna be tough. Oh, and, and a quick and snag from yep. Amsa. The trickery. Up 2 0 in this set now. Yep. It's Mango trying to get in there, but he keeps getting hit. Okay. Oh, whoa, okay. Flying eggs. <laughs> oh, the jab reset. Oh, oh my, my god. That's like no, such but a the cloud. Get this. Nope. For the pure of heart, but not even Amsa. Amsa is looking so good in this set right now. Yep. Shout out to the Notcher. Oh, oh, oh my god. Wait a minute. Don't attack his shield. But Amsa. Amsa. Mango potentially on his last dock here. Oh, 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 and he gets oh, the down the smash. And he gets the oh, egg. No. Amsa very content to just stay on stage and keep nearing him off. Oh, and the nair. Is that actually it? That's yes. actually it. And Amsa popping off 3 0 -ing Mango. Oh, man. And that is it for Mango here at Genesis. Yo, the run is over. He, run is he over. had a run. Oh, my, my man ran a marathon. Yeah, he did. Ooh, and Amsa with the 30. The 3-0. The, the quickest oh. of 3 0s Ah, oh, man. Advancing in bracket, Amsa would then lose to fellow mid-tier main Axe, placing fourth at the biggest tournament of 2019. Oh my goodness gracious, they're both at 69% and they're both loving it. Though the rest of his year showed no slowing down, as Amsa racked up another win on Mango at Smash and Splash 5, and a third victory at Super Smash Con 2019, ending the year with a 3 to nothing record against him. Amsa would even pick up another victory on Hungrybox, who once again would be ranked number one on the year-end rankings. He was now able to pick up wins consistently on some of the best of the best, players who were able to win the biggest tournaments of the year. And as Axe would secure Pikachu's first major victory in the game's entire 20-year history, rumblings began in the community that Amsa was next up. And that uh, made, made me, yeah, next time, my turn. <laughs> My turn, for sure. Oh, so I still think that Yoshi is not the middle tier characters. Mm -hmm. Yoshi should be high tier character, like a top ten. I I prove it. Um, just myself. Thank you, guys. These huge results inspired Amsa to quit his full-time job to pursue Melee full-time, and finally fully invest himself into his dream of winning with Yoshi. If Amsa was able to do all of this with a full-time job playing a mid-tier, 
developing and pushing the character all on his own, it felt like an Amsa dedicating his life to the feat of taking a big tournament could only result in one thing. 2020 started off rough for Amsa, where at both Genesis 7 and Smash Summit 9, the Red Yoshi would place 9th. Amsa had experienced state of emergency hardships before. Or though. Much of Japan has been under lockdown restrictions. Oh. There's no let up in the surge of coronavirus cases across Asia. Yeah. Japan is further tightening its border control measures. And this road bump would be no different. At Smash Summit 9, the last major tournament AMSA would go to before COVID halted international travel and effectively paused in person competitive melee, he would fight Fiction, a Fox player ranked number 12 in the world. The winner of this match would be placed in the winner's bracket the next day, the loser in the loser's bracket. After being beaten game four, Fiction would counterpick Amsa to final destination. A completely flat stage with no platforms. Platforms which Yoshi loves to move around with and counterattack on. To put it simply, this stage really sucks for Yoshi and it had been the go-to counterpick against Amsa since he first began traveling. And though he put up a great fight, Amsa would lose this game five. Oh, like it's can he get out? Curtis. He cannot. Wow. Securing his place in the loser's bracket the next day. This loss clearly affected Amsa, because for the first time most can recall, Amsa would be visibly dejected slumping down in his chair after the loss. Great stuff. That was an amazing oh, set. I'm so yeah, clearly. I'm so, uh, that, because if Fiction makes that winner, that, that's really good for him. That's huge. That is massive. Fiction making waves, man. The next day, Amsa would win his first set before immediately losing the next one, ending his run at ninth place. The same placement he had gotten at the only other major tournament he would attend in 2020. The year prior, Amsa felt he had finally reached the level where he could realistically win a major. Now uh, I'm full-time player, right. for sure, so I can spend my time more, and then, uh, yeah, I, can, I could win the tournament. And many others felt the same. But now, at the beginning of 2020, it seemed he had regressed back to where he was for so many years. And Amsa had to sit on this feeling for a year and a half. The narrative has been that Amsa can win a tournament, but like, nah, he really. The, the theory, the theory was, the theory was, well, he could if. Like the theory was, he okay, kind of misses his window, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, I appreciate his enthusiasm, but uh, gotta prove it at some point. Late 2021 saw Amza's return to competition with Smash Summit 11, and as Mango, soon to be voted the GOAT of Melee, would make one of his best loser's bracket runs of his decade-plus long career, Amza would again end at ninth place. Unfortunately, he was playing catch-up. Both North Americans and Europeans had been able to continue practicing and competing against other top talent via online play, even when in-person events weren't possible. But as the sole top player in his region, Amsa's practice was much more sparse and of much lower general skill. At subsequent majors, however, Amsa would see a bit of a return to form. Then, in April of 2022, Amsa would enter Pound, where he would make an incredible loser's run of his own, being taken out of winner's bracket early by Peach Main Polish, before making a six-set run through losers to the highest placing of his entire career, third place. God. Wow, and that might do what? it. It does. What? Amsa just taking I... that stock out of nowhere. Taking out players like Cody, soon to be ranked number two in the world. This combo is crazy. It's Come on, Amsa. It's still going. It's still going. Amsa in top eight. Japan, where are you at? And Leffen, then ranked five. Gets hit by double Two and a down He covered it all. Wait, that's, that's it. That's down deep. And Amsa wheels Leffen for the first time ever. Hungrybox being the one to finally put an end to Amsa's onslaught. He's pulling out all the tricks now. Oh, that's but it. That's it. Yeah, the air dodge. Um, Amsa's only option left, and H-Box takes it. Hungry Box ending the Cinderella run from Amsa. Man, huge, huge run from Amsa, though. Outplacing at, at a third place, outplacing so many good players. Yeah. Crowd loves it. Crowd loves Amsa. Amsa's, Amsa's probably the best player who's never won a major. 
A few months later, at Double Down, Omsa would somehow top this performance. Making his way into winner's side top 8 without much fuss, he would face the number one player in the world, Zane, whom he would take out with a resounding 3-1. He gets clogged off the side! Oh, oh my Zane. god! No! Oh my god! Omsa takes Zane! He is in winner's finals over Zane! Omsa, now in winner's finals of a major for the first time in his nearly 10-year career, had to face Cody, whom he had just beaten a few months earlier at Pound. After falling 0-2 in the set, Omsa would decide to experiment. Cody was utilizing platforms way better than he was. Omsa realized he needed to stifle that, and he needed to streamline his play, focusing on simple combos and simple neutral game. Omsa needed Final Destination. And FD, wait. Oh. Omsa Omsa FD? For the, um, for the punish? Um, I um. think <laughs> FD's not good. Because Amsa and Yoshi love platforms. They love platforms. Uh, uh, yeah, it definitely feels like Amsa's reaching a little bit. And because uh, right now uh -oh. he's looking. Oh, uh -oh. this is you what he needs. No. Yeah. Oh, oh my gosh, the down smash. Did he land? He did it. No. So quick. Wow. So that, quick. That Amsa. one air dodge mistake from IBDW. Amsa makes it. Though his experiment was successful. Cody secured the following game to end the set at a 3-1, and Amsa dropped to the loser's bracket. Amsa, just one stock away from heading into Grand Finals, but a salty run back. Amsa looking so good. How do you even go up in a percent deficit to Yoshi right now? The side beat from ledge. Yeah, oh, wow, level Amsa. one. Yeah, Fiction goes in with a dare, and Amsa does the bread and butter parry. Wow. Amsa triumphantly moving into Grand Finals over Fiction. Just an hour prior, Amsa had made it into Winner's Finals of a major tournament for the first time. And now, Amsa sat in Grand Finals of the entire thing. He would face Cody again, taking him to Game 5 and once again trying his experimental counterpick. Things look to be building up to a bracket reset. And potentially, Amsa's first major victory until an unfortunate suicide brought everyone back to reality. Oh. But big punish! Oh. This could be it for Amsa! Oh, the egg barely no. took it in! Oh my god! A critical miss! Amsa no. dies! Last stock. When he has the edge oh guard. Oh my god. Cody going through a wave of emotions no. right now. That's the win oh, doesn't want to no. win like that. And so much respect between these two players. A hard-fought set for both of them. Okay, I'm here with Amsa. Uh, after a monumental second-place finish here at Double Down, how does that feel? It, it must be a kind of a new experience. Yeah, so... Yeah, I didn't want to get, uh, win the uh, major at this time. But, uh, yeah, that was a pretty good experience to me. For the, uh, my fans, so, so like that. Every time they ch chance for me, like I'm so, I'm so, I'm so. It it, it gave me the much of the power for sure. And uh, yeah, I really love Mary. I I I really wanna keep uh, competing in this game forever. In October of that year, Amsa, along with most of the best players in the world, would enter the 10th installment of the Big House. Now, the Big House is normally a really big tournament, but this one was a different sort of big. This was the most stacked tournament of all time. Not in terms of entrance, no, but by metric of the amount of top talent there. It wasn't just five tippy-top players vying to win and a couple thousand relative scrubs. That era had passed. This was nearly a thousand entrants, consisting of almost twice as many players who could realistically win, and dozens more killers just beneath them. With something this stacked, the odds of Amsa again making the run he did at smaller majors like Double Down or Pound was slim to none. But this could be the experience he needed to, in the future, prepare to win one of those less insane events. Amsa's run began by dominating his pool's opponents. Reaching top 64, Amsa would swiftly 3-0 Crudo, then do the same to the number 10 player in the world, Kadoran. 
one of the prospects to take the whole event. Well, that looked very, very decisive from Mops' end, though, so... It did. This put him in the path of Hungrybox, whom, at this point, he had an abysmal record of three wins to ten losses. Hungrybox was definitely not one of the people he wanted to run into to recreate his pound and double down performances, but he'd give it his all. I haven't spoken with Opsa that much. Is he prep? You feel like, um... Opsa does a lot of prep. Okay, it's about to just get clobbered. I don't know what to say about this. I don't know what to say either, <laughs> but I, I, do want to, I do want to talk about that back air. <laughs> no charge, just and, like... And, and, oh! Well, that was... Okay, that was interesting. Maybe a little too late for this game one, but... Wow, what a punish on that press! That's, that's a huge punish. Oh, no. Because he's gotten hit by some crucial ones. That was another Gosh. crouch under a pound. Not like Opsa the way just he's doing ducking. it. Yeah, just ducking. Ops has kind of SD'd both his stocks this game, so like, even though Hbox is winning, I'm not that convinced that Hbox is really, like, convincingly outplaying Ops yet. That's what it is, Toph. Yeah, I still feel like Ops is in control. Oh my god. Yeah, like, that was in, scary. It feels like he's in control of this. Look, I mean, physically look at the stage. Ops has a control of practically all of it. He's down, but not out. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. Oh, okay, there it is, there it is, there it is. Now he's out. He's out. He's out. Now he's out. Game he's out. two. Game two. Yeah, this is what we observed that FD and Dreamland are pretty tough for Yoshi, and even that looked pretty doable. There were some unfortunate SDs from Opsa at the start. Opsa is clobbering Hbox right now. 154 percent, no signs of slowing down. Wow, Opsa really is a beast. <laughs> yeah. Jeez, and oh my goodness! Every time Opsa gets one of those like tech chase setups with the forger. Oh no, but Hbox, that's a clutch ledge grab. Opsa that might really have fallen asleep the wheel a little bit. Yeah. But wait a minute. Out but not down. <laughs> oh! Why that oh, no! What just happened? An egg stage spike? <laughs> Pump? And H-Buck was out of jumps? <laughs> and meanwhile, Amsa up 2-1 against Hungrybox, but we are on Dreamland. We are. I, I would almost question if how many games Amsa's won over H-Buck here in like lifetime. Chope, it is two stocks to one Amsa. Hungrybox is this close to the loser's bracket. A bear doesn't do it. Wow. Yoshi, a heavy boy, and 176, 45 seconds? We might be going to time, ladies and gentlemen. No. Oh, no, my no. goodness. The X-52. Opsa surviving. And by the way, left it out of the bracket. Oh, the fourth match. He's going to win on the Angel Platform. Oh, you know he's going to win on that Angel Platform. You know it. Hey, I'm just going to say it. H-Bucks needs to make a rest happen. That's the only way. H-Box needs a rest. He needs a rest. 52% tope! This is not tenable. This is not tenable. 65% tope! It can't be done! It can't be done! It's over! 5, 4, I'm sorry, 3, 2, 1! Ah! You noticed the timer at a bet 90 seconds left and it just hit me like a ton ah! of bricks. That this is a timeout threat. <laughs> and I'm so, by the way, Opsa was cool as a cucumber. Cool as a so cucumber. He didn't force anything. Oh my goodness. Is this what you wanted to see from Big House? What? Once again, Amso was in winner's side of top eight. His first match would be against Sunsei, an incredible fox who had made a number of insane upsets to reach winner's semifinals. Punishing after that, but a lot of situations maybe you don't get the opportunity to do that, but Amso's looking pretty good so far in the set. Mm -hmm. Getting mm -hmm. game one, uh, an odd situation. Nice, he's like, look, I'm gonna force you to double jump cancel. And then with Boba Gulan, I'm about to drill Shino Smash you. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure there's a god like Yoshi player here, like, like, like not other. But wait, 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 wait. Oh, Amsa can take these oh, stocks immediately. Wow. Oh, he's it. Ooh. The multi egg edge guard. The egg Yo. guard. I also gotta say, it feels like Amsa is super prepared for oh. the, tr the transformation. Doesn't it feel like Amsa is hella prepared it's for going the transformation? Out there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And Amsa. Takes it on the Waiting for him in winner's finals was Mango. At this point, Amsa had caught up to him in set count, though Mango was still ahead six sets to five. Mango was playing incredibly, some of the best he'd ever played, and to stifle this would be no small feat. But Amsa, well, played Yoshi. And that's what he was expecting. That percent lead is not so much. That's a tight window to get on Yoshi. The heavier you are in this game, the less hits that you incur. Uh-oh! Tech chase. 
Miss Tech, Miss Tech, tech Trap. Down tilt, not much for the down smash. Oh, oh Mango Man. Castle from Mango, shades of the suits they set. Ops is trying to prioritize moves that are uh, on a certain hill. Yeah. Right, and like he doesn't want to give me one one in the winner's bracket finals. And this is such an important set because whoever loses and goes down to the loser's bracket may not come back. This is looking like Mango's got control right now. Oh my goodness. I'm still looking for the second place. Then turn oh. around as quickly as I said it. He can't make it back. He can't make it back. As long as Fox is up, he is. It's not that long, Toe. 2-1 Opsa. Could you imagine a Yoshi in Grand Finals at the most stacked tournament of all time? I get, you know, I want to say no. I have but to say I no. I can't imagine it. But I was thinking about how deranged Opsa mm. must be to not only be <laughs> a god oh, melee yeah. player, but to insist on playing with Yoshi of all characters to the bitter end. I don't know. Stock of <laughs> champions, Toe. What I can't do is this going to last off. I'm spending the win. Oh! Woo! Missed that. Bops it already. Uh, he thought Mango would take it again. He was looking for the tech chase. He was a hair. Toe! Bop it! No, he's no. not. No. Move no. the forward no. matches. They can hold the top. He's alive. He lives. <laughs> <laughs> there is Brent and Mango Fox. Yeah! My heart's oh, not hot. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Since humans have started counting years and not lost track. <laughs> a Yoshi in the game of Super Smash Bros. Melee has defeated two of the gods <laughs> of the very game <laughs> to secure a spot in Grand Finals at perhaps the most stacked tournament of all time. There's one set standing in Ops' way from winning the biggest house. The biggest house. And his first super major. Omsa now sat in grand finals through winner's side at the hardest tournament ever and awaited his opponent. Mango, now with the fire of loser's bracket in him, would make quick work of Cody, leaving just two players in the entire tournament, Omsa and himself. Moving into Grand Finals, the GOAT had just one goal. Take the Big House through Loser's Bracket as he had done the Big House before. Mango and Amsa fist bump. The crowd erupts in anticipation. Grand Finals begins. Mango is no stranger to this exact situation. He is one of the scariest players to play in a Grand Finals when he's coming from Loser's. Oh, yeah. He is just a fighter through and through, and any nervousness on the part of his opponent, he will sniff out and he will smash. And I have to say that for Opsa, I can imagine how much this means, because it's been so long that he's been fighting to get to this exact place. And I think the biggest obstacle in this path is his composure. Smacking that box. Oh, jab, jab reset. reset! Oh, that's hard to take if you haven't seen that before. One of, that's one of those moves that's a uh, fixed knockback. The Yoshi up throw is really weird to tech, and that's going to be game one. I can't believe that Opsa turned that opening into a stock. Let's see who can take this next one. Yeah, this is like... Oh, this could be huge. Wow, great sign of Mango. That is it. Just so much damage every hit Opsa gets. He is just pummeling Mango. Wow. 118. Oh my goodness, going across the whole stage, and he just waited. He waited. Opsa is one stock away from like a oh, completely dominant position in this tournament. Yeah, this is, oh my god, okay, great tech for Mango. Look at the damage, Toad! Why was he ready for that? Oh my goodness gracious, Mango's getting beat down. He is getting beat ah, down. Opsa is just flip. such a problem right now. 2-0! Toad! It's real! It's We're one game body, away body tap, from a body Yoshi! Tap, body tap, body tap, a it's Yoshi! Actually, it's actually happening. Oh God, These top tier <laughs> characters with endless tools. This is Yoshi! Yoshi. He cannot jump out of shield! No, can't. He doesn't have an upbeat! Oh my goodness, from all the way from Kings of Cali, where I had, you know, I was commentating Yoshi versus M2K, and I was like, there's just no chance Amsa zero, can win right, this. Zero. There's no shot. The grittiest player I've ever known, the most the amazing player. melee player I have ever known is down to his last stop here at the Big House 10. But is he out? 
or is Mango gonna open one last door? Oh, two up airs. It's oh enough. my goodness, he's on the board, Tom. Oh. He's on the board. Mango, Mango taking his second stop lead. Mango is coming alive so a little I'm bit. I'm gonna call it like I see it, and I'm just gonna say that I think that Obza is feeling pressure. I think the toughest part of all this for Obza is that he was right there. Is he thinking about it? I'm telling you, how could he not? Yeah. I don't think that Obza's physiology is helping him right now. That's all I'm trying to say. Well, whatever's going on with Mango's physiology is helping him. Yeah, he Mango's is moving and proving. We're going to game five. We're going to game five. And that was some of the best Fox Yoshi play that I've seen all tournament and probably all my life. Do you run it back adrenaline? What do you do? Whatever Opsa does, FD. I trust. He's crazy. The stage that he used to hate by far the worst stage for him. And we're getting the first stop. Mango for the first time. Looking at the, uh, you know, the one who knows the matchup better. That's going to be it. Okay, he doesn't miss that three times. There's no three. way he misses that three times. Here's the hole. Another open tag. up. Missed tag. Game five. Missed tag. This is the this is game five. Is Opsa going to have his stop Fox lead? Smash? That's probably a dead fox, bro. That is a dead fox. Bro. Confirmed game to five. seal the envelope, Bobby. Opsa with the stop lead. Mango has shown that he's awake. Both players are awake. Wilden's going to a set oh. two. It had to be last stop, oh. Tope. Of course it did. If Opsa of opens Mango up did. here, history will be written. Now last stock with more percent than Mango, the situation becomes do or die. Lose here and go into the second set with one of your biggest rivals, the king of losers runs, or win. Win through the determination of 10 years of play, thousands of hours of practice, thousands of screaming fans, dozens of heartbreakers, so much effort, all this time, all this passion and love for this one game. It all comes down to this. This character, formerly a low tier, on this stage, previously an impossible to win on counterpick, against this opponent, the greatest player of all time, playing the best character at the most stacked tournament ever. Amsa did it. Smashes the controller down. He knows that he had it. He knows how close he was. Mango put up an incredible fight because that was looking like it was going to be easy peasy for Amsa. Yeah. Then it looked like it was going to be easy peasy for Mango. And there were going to be broken hearts. But at the last stock, game five, big house 10. I don't believe A Yoshi. Yoshi Bobby. A Yoshi is the best of the 987 competitors. <laughs> and by the way, this is not just the first big house he's won, it's the first major. The first major he's ever won, and it's the hardest one ever. Big thank you to Alpine, Antonio G, Chenry, Droid, Dubs Rewatcher, Ev McSheps, Fobby, George Bush, Game Player 1500, Guava with a question mark, Harpo Dog. I've got three marks of excellence using KV2 with 107 millimeter gun. Fizzy, John B, Catharg, Lenny M, Lonely Rolling Egg, LRC Napkin, Matthew B, P Jiggles, PM Casey, Safi Chaos, Shep if you tried meditation. That Rack, The Storm, The Flying Fire, Trendrecht, Wyvern, and Yashichi. Yeah, I did it. Yeah. So I flew it. So Yoshi is actually a good character. 